The slow season for games is finally coming to an end, which means before I go lose my mind trying to figure out if Forspoken is good or not, I get to spend one more video losing my mind trying to figure out if Signalis is good or not. Welcome to the Year in Review. I'm Alex, this is First Five, and I'm checking out some of the hottest games of 2022. They're short, they're sweet, and they're already peer-reviewed and probably topping somebody's Game of the Year list somewhere. We're rounding out last year's coverage with Signalis, a game that honestly, I don't usually go for. I'm not a big horror guy, I'm not usually interested in piecing together cryptic, esoteric narratives, and one look at that trailer told me this was going to be a pretty slow-paced game, with more in common with point-and-click adventure games than Resident Evil. I ended up being right on all of those points, but I also ended up being wrong in thinking I wouldn't enjoy it, because Signalis is a great little gem. Eventually. Signalis is also kind of a tale of two games, flipping most of its conventions on their head right at the halfway mark. The first half is a very gameplay-centric and respectable survival horror game, while the back end suddenly decides it's time to have a plot now and plays far better to Signalis' strengths. Which, speaking of, let's break those down. Without burying the lead too much, Signalis is an aesthetically impeccable game. The past few years have seen pixel art games transform and grow at a shocking rate. From Unsighted, to Unpacking, to River City Girls, and a million other indies, this is one of the most explosively evolving art styles in video games right now. Whether it's in sheer fidelity, or the amount of painstaking animation put into what is effectively hand-drawn art, a new game comes out what feels like every three months that makes me think pixel games have never looked better than this. And it's not just the pixel art. Signalis leaps between art styles almost at will, bashing together retro PS1 art, real-world media, gorgeously rendered UI overlays crisp enough for 4K, and random mishmashes of typography, all while leaping from a top-down perspective to first-person to abstract cutscene, and somehow, SOMEHOW, this game's direction manages to keep it all feeling cohesive, even when it's jumping art styles on a merely frame-by-frame -frame basis. And that's without even getting into the equally evocative soundscape of bleeding alarms, radio frequencies, and random German. Much like last time's Cult of the Lamb, everything here is polished to near perfection, but the sheer number of artistic disciplines on display here is staggering. The only area in which the direction falters is with enemy design, which perhaps leaves a little too much to the imagination. The monsters in Signalis are these weird flesh-robotic hybrids, which is certainly gruesome, but as presented here in a mishmash of nearly identical colors with static only further obscuring them, mostly just look like brown puddles, and I'm not terribly intimidated by brown puddles. But outside of that one detail, Signalis is an incredibly striking and gorgeous game, whether it wants to capture grimy industrial corridors or get a little more surreal with it. This is, by far, the game's greatest strength. Mechanically, the main cue this game takes from other survival horror games is a long and complex lock and key system that has you crisscrossing a single self-contained play space, but it leans far harder on this mechanic than other games in its genre. Where another survival horror game might task you with finding three medallions to unlock a door and then let you move on with your life, each of Signalis' regions require you to find at least a dozen different keys, many of which exist purely to extend the process, with keys often unlocking a new room that just contains another key that unlocks a new room that contains a key, and so on. This is primarily to force you to crisscross the same half-dozen hallways repeatedly and get in trouble with the locals. Which, speaking of, combat technically exists in this game, but it's more of a threat and a failure state than an actual gameplay mechanic. Because of other cues Signalis takes from its predecessors, namely limited ammo and health pickups and an even more limited inventory system to carry them all with, combat is something you actively want to avoid. It's also just not that enjoyable. It's stiff and clunky and slow in very classic survival horror fashion, but it's also not really supposed to stand on its own. It's meant to force you to interact with the rest of the gameplay systems, and in that respect, it does that job admirably. But rather than brute forcing your way through with an auto-aiming gun, the real mechanical juice is in the navigation and exploration. It's in the joy of walking into a new building with an entirely blank map, then slowly growing more familiar with that space as you learn to efficiently navigate it, to discover the pathways through each level you can safely run through without firing a bullet, and learn ways you can abuse the AI and its glacial attack animations. Avoiding enemies is almost always more mechanically satisfying than standing your ground and fighting them. 
What's a little less satisfying is Signalis' narrative, which spends several hours kinda just puttering around without going anywhere. You're playing an android named Elster, who's looking for a close friend in a mining facility that happens to be getting taken over by some sort of weird virus that turns its predominantly robotic workforce into terrifying meat monsters. Fun setup, but Signalis seems entirely uninterested in it. Elster's quest jogs in place while the game spends its first few hours focusing on basically anything else. Want to know what's going on with the virus? You'll read plenty of theories. Want to know about the world building of this crazy sci-fi universe? Oh boy, we've got a ton of that. Want an actual plot beat or resonant character moment? Hmm. Good luck with that. And if I hadn't played ahead a little bit, my review would have ended around there. But all of a sudden, around the five hour mark, Elster's plotline gets broken out of amber, and the entire game transforms. All of a sudden, it is intensely interested in Elster's situation, as she becomes a massive gravity well the entire game gets dragged into. Gameplay mostly becomes more linear, cutscenes become frequent, everything gets increasingly surreal and metaphorical, there's an actual narrative to care about, and it's good! It takes like five hours to get there, but damn! And there are two ways to look at what's going on with Signalis. One is that this back half of the game plays far more to its strengths. The first half depends solely on the game's weakest elements, with almost entirely unbroken gameplay, with only the occasional mini-puzzle to really break up the proceedings. The back half, in comparison, gets to completely break loose artistically, and is almost entirely focused on filling in the many blanks of its narrative. And it's impossible to stress just how much harder the back half of this game absolutely rips. But the less charitable reading is that Signalis tries to play cute with its cryptic mystery for a little too long, and once the game is finally willing to start giving you some straight answers, it instantly becomes significantly more compelling. I'll admit that my own biases play into this take, but I find mysteries are far more interesting when the questions they raise are a bit more specific than just asking, I wonder what's going on? Signalis expends a great deal of energy trying to stretch this suspense out, but it gives you so little in the meantime that it feels more like you're just treading water in a plot purgatory. In Signalis's case, this time isn't entirely wasted, as things have to stay relatively normal for a little bit for the game's eventual descent into surrealistic allegory to be effective, but the game is far better when it's trying to be a drama than a mystery. I find it particularly damning that after five hours, I deadass wrote in my notes that this game had absolutely zero interest in interrogating its main protagonist in any way whatsoever, when it turns out that Elster's whole deal is this game's entire reason for existing! I'm being incredibly vague to avoid spoilers, but this isn't a plot twist, it's not even a surprise leap into a new genre. Signalis just sits around waiting for five hours to do the thing it actually cares about, which leaves me in a very strange headspace and believing that Signalis is a phenomenal game that nonetheless could have been far better. But this is the Signalis we got, and so now I have to answer the incredibly thorny and complicated question, what do you get out of five hours with Signalis? These first five hours were enough to get me through the game's first three regions, about halfway through the game. During these five hours, Signalis starts reasonably good, but is nothing particularly special. Then halfway in, it suddenly decides out of nowhere to become a Game of the Year contender. Ultimately, I'd say this is one of my favorite games of 2022, but I also find myself reminded of a very recent philosophical video I just got done making. My ultimate verdict is that I think Signalis is indeed worth your time, but it would not be terribly honest of myself to not also note the many asterisks attached to that statement. There are two wildly different halves to this game, and if you only like one of them, you'll have to endure a significant amount of time with the other one. My video on Nier Automata is not the only one this review feels in conversation with, either. Signalis also makes for an interesting comparison point with my previous review of Cult of the Lamb. With Cult of the Lamb, I found a game that was polished to perfection, complete with absolutely killer aesthetic, but with gameplay systems and a story so safe that I'd felt like I'd already played it a hundred times. Signalis has the exact same level of polish, and honestly, its gameplay is just about as basic, and I've absolutely seen this story before. And yet, despite all these similarities between the two, Cult of the Lamb left me feeling hollow and exhausted, while Signalis has spent weeks burrowed in the back of my brain, quietly refusing to let me forget about it. Maybe it's the less crowded genre Signalis is operating in, or at least my lack of familiarity with it, or maybe it's the presence of actual rough edges in the game. Where Cult of the Lamb meticulously sanded off every possible snag or edge that a player might have caught themselves on, Signalis went the opposite direction and purposely sharpened them. 
Whether it's the abstract and surreal narrative or the perhaps less immediately exciting gameplay, Signalis is a more difficult meal to chew on than Cult of the Lamb, but also infinitely more memorable. And if we really want to ask questions like if a game is worth your time, and we have to choose one over the other because, let's be realistic, there's only so much time to play so many video games, I'd far more readily recommend Signalis. Because you're better off experiencing something flawed but unique and interesting over something that is immaculately crafted but wrote. From my experiences listening to other people talk about it, Signalis seems to have been a somewhat divisive game. Either you absolutely love it and can't stop singing its praises, or you bounce off of it hard. And after playing it, I can see why. It's definitely a game that requires a very specific kind of player to enjoy it. It's a game for the explorers of the world. Those who fell in love with wandering off the beaten path in Breath of the Wild, or trying to make sense of the emotionally charged but sometimes perplexing narratives of a Kojima game will probably find themselves right at home here. I know that despite my issues with it, I certainly did. And speaking of finding yourself at home with something, it's time to thank the first five Patreon crew, without whom this channel would not be able to function. If you like the work I do, you could be right up here with them in the credits for the low, low cost of $5 a month, as well as in the first five Discord and getting video essays a day before everybody else. You can find a link down in the description, as well as right here in the end card. I'd also like to take the chance to remind folks that streaming is coming later this month, so please look forward to that and a more concrete start date in the coming days. But I hope you all enjoyed this somewhat belated review of Signalis, and I will see you all next time.